Ooh, I've never had that option. Okay. Looks like it's recording. Okay. So um, another thing I was going to ask, well, I'm probably going to post this on Breeze Your Build, but I think we'll do a, um, a daytime and nighttime call on Thursday. So I'll just do two. So I'm thinking we'll do one at like 10 a.m. Hopefully that'll help some people out and then do this one at eight. So then people have a choice of which one they want to do for, to accommodate all our time zones. We're just too big. <laughs> um, okay. So um, I was just going to kind of go over like the top, well, I was hoping for top 10, but I actually only have eight pointers for teaching a killer class. So this is all basically um, based off of stuff that we've been learning from Tasha Smith's Emerge Sales Training. And Stacy has taken some of those trainings, Kaylee's taken some of those trainings, and we've gone over some of this before, but it's always good to review. So I was hoping we'd kind of go over this stuff about once a month, um, just because it's the basis of our business, is being able to teach a class or a one-on-one. -on -one. So, um, so very first thing is to provide an agenda. Um, let people tend to respond better when they know what to expect and what's going on. So then they can kind of let their guard down a little bit. So providing an agenda and letting them know what exactly what you're going to talk about in your class or one on one and about how long it's going to take. Um, Cause then people don't you feel that way too though, right? If you can relax a little bit, if you know how long something's going to be like, so then you're not like thinking it's almost over and it's not, or, um, and it lets people's guards down. Totally. It, it, it takes those walls down because um, they know what you expect um, yeah. in the process too. And so it just lets everybody relax. And I think people are a lot more open to it when those walls aren't up. Yep. Yeah, I totally agree. And I personally am more likely to relax and listen if I know how long something is. But if I'm just sitting in on a meeting or whatever, and I don't know how long it is, I kind of get on edge because I, I'm like, oh, how long is this going to be? Am I going to be here for half an hour or an hour and a half? I don't know. So yeah, if you have an expectation of how long it's going to be, then that's fantastic. I feel like in the script, and I don't know if everybody quite follows what I'm saying, so I don't want to confuse anybody, but in the script, when she talks about um, making sure you make a point that you don't have to order anything. Removing that pressure to buy is huge yep. because a lot of people think they come and they're like, I can't leave unless I buy something. So that's perfect. Kaylee. That's like the, my most important reason, I guess, for setting the agenda, just because people think, Oh, I have to go to this girl's class because she won't stop inviting me and I have to leave here with something. In my hand. <laughs> and I find that, I find that they're actually more open to buying, to buying. Right. that too because the pressure's off. And it's the reverse psychology. Time, so it yeah. Works. It's because totally. they're, you're not expecting it of them and they know that. So they don't feel obligated and they're more likely to relax and actually listen to what you have to say, which makes them more open to it. And I've had a lot more sales since I've done that. I love it. Well, that was perfect, Kaylee, because that was my number two, was removing the pressure to buy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, don't be sorry. You were perfect. That was awesome. So, yeah, so that's fantastic. So, removing the pressure to buy and just Stacey and Kaylee, you guys did that awesome. That's perfect. Okay, so number three is making sure that you go over their health goals. And this kind of goes against a little bit what we've been taught or trained to do beforehand. Like, in the past, you know, we sit there and talk about our story and why we do doTERRA and why we love doTERRA and why we use it. So instead of taking that time and talking about yourself and why you are using doTERRA, I mean, you can definitely bring that up if it's short and sweet and not um, unrelatable, you know, um, then I think that's fine. But make sure you leave time to go over their specific health concerns. And, um, and always ask what else until they say they can't think of anything else because I'm sure you're all in the same boat with me here as women. Who do we tend to think about first when you ask us, okay, tell us about a health concern you have. Your kids. Your kids. Think about your kids. Okay. Then who are you going to think about? Your husband. Your husband. Yep. You got it. And then who? Your parents. Your parents. You got it. <laughs> and then you might get to you or you might go to your best friend first and then to you. 
So you're probably going to have to ask what else, like, what is that three or four times until they get to them, until they get to their thing, which is totally fine though. Right? Because they might still want to purchase a kit to help their kids and husband. In fact, they will probably be more likely to buy a kit to help their, their kids and their husbands than they would for themselves. But anyway, that's just something um, that I've kind of found is, is helpful to just ask what else. And sometimes they'll even ask anything for you if they're not bringing that up. We're such selfless creatures, aren't we? So amazing. Okay. Um, so the next thing, the next number four that I had written down here was to make sure you're asking yes questions. So if you're asking questions that are going to have them answer yes or instead of no, then they are more likely to say yes to you at the end of the class because for whatever reason, human nature, and I'm going to do actually a whole, um, we'll do a whole call on this one time about the no questions, but um, for whatever reason, our, nat our human nature is to say no right off the bat. I don't know why, but when somebody asks us a question, the first thing we want to say is no. So if we can get the no's out of the way and then have people responding yes or ask, ask the question in the first place that's going to make them say yes, then they're going to be more likely to enroll or purchase anything from you because they've already said yes to you multiple times throughout the class. So for instance, asking them questions as you're teaching about the oils that are going to make them say yes. So for instance, um, you know, talking about deep blue, you know, do any of you have aches and pains that this would help with? Or wouldn't this be great for when you have some aches and pains? Or lavender, wouldn't it be great to get a good night's sleep tonight? Or couldn't you use this to help you with your kids getting them to bed? Anything that's going to help them answer yes. Um, does that make sense to everybody about the yes questions? Yes. Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so number five is number five tip on your, your killer one-on-one -on -one here for class is um, help them imagine themselves using the product or the oils. So, for instance, this is the, always the way I taught the class, right? So, I love lemon because I love to put up my water because it helps me lower my or regulate my blood pressure, okay? So, instead of it being all about me when I'm talking about the product, because what did you picture in your head when I said all of that, right? You're picturing it. Yeah using the oil you using it me using it so if you say if you phrase it just in another words right letting it be about them so that they can then imagine themselves using the oil oh, oh lemon you're gonna love this one you can put it in your water it's a nice natural gentle beach box with everyone it can help uplifting to your mood whatever it is that you want to say. So then they're imagining that they're using that oil instead of imagining you using that oil. And if they can imagine themselves using the product, then they're going to be more likely to purchase it, right? Oh, we have somebody in the chat. Yes. Oh, Diana. Oh, yeah. Is that Diana Phillips on? She must be muted. Um, I'm so impressed that you birthday moms on here tonight. Super impressive. Okay. All right. So, um, let's see. Number, what are we on? Number six. Um, so number six is to only give two kit options at the end. Um, a lot of times when people have to think about it, have you ever had somebody say that, right? Oh, I've got to take it home and think about it. Ah. That's because you've given them too many options most of the time, right? So instead of study an enrollment kit flyer with all of the options, we actually have printed out or run and created, it's in the file section of Breathe, Share, Build, and it's, I think he called it most popular kit options, and it's just 
those two, like the family essentials and the home, no wait. Family right. essentials and home essentials. My gosh. <sighs> they killed me when they changed the name of that class. <laughs> that I kid. think it's still wrong in the slideshow though. Yes, it is. It is. Although we just we just figured out how to switch it. We couldn't figure out how to change it, but I think we finally have got it now. But yeah, you're right. On our basic class, it is the wrong stuff. Um, so yeah, so only giving two options because then basically all they have to decide because with those two kits, right? Sorry, it's the same ten oils in both of the kits, and it's the same ten oils that hopefully you talked about in your class, and so. Then they just have to decide, do they want small bottles or big bottles? Like there's no, no other horrible decisions that they have to make about which products they're getting or anything like that. So, um, which just reminded me of another thing. So if you're going to teach on a different topic, make sure you don't go over 10 products. So 10 seems to be like the capacity of what we're able to to take in. After that, we just kind of get on overload. So just make sure that you that you really only touch on 10 products. Next, there's only 10 oils in those basic kits. Okay, so number seven is ask if they want to get it at the end of the class. How many times do we not ask because we're afraid to? I've so totally done that too many times. But um, how many how many times have we probably had people not enroll because we didn't ask them if they wanted to get it? So just don't be afraid to just ask because you've removed that pressure to buy, right? So now they're not feeling obligated. So now it shouldn't be awkward. So you can just ask them, you know, if you were to get a kit, which one would you prefer? They answer you and then you say, great. Do you want to get it? So easy. Uh, okay, and then my last tip here, number eight, was um, keep it short. Keep it definitely under an hour. And if you can do your part in 30 minutes and then have, you know, obviously, depending upon the class, it might be really chatty or whatever. But um, then they can ask questions and you can go over their specific health concerns. But have your part only be 30 minutes. Um, it might be up to an hour if they have a lot of questions. But definitely try to keep it less than an hour so that you're respectful of people's time and then you know, you're keeping to what you said when you started the agenda. And um, yeah, I think after that, people kind of get an over in there. They kind of check out. They're like, oh, this was too much information. So anyway, so any other, any other questions you guys have? Or Stacey or Kaylee, do you want to add in anything else since you two have been through a lot of those trainings? No, I think you've gone over the basics. Which is a good reminder because I have somebody coming any minute. Yay! <laughs> Perfect. And we do have a few of the scripts um, for this um, simplified way of teaching in the Breathe, Share, Build file section. Um, I think there's two of them. Um, I can't remember what they're called right off, but, they're, but there's two of those in the file section of Breathe, Share, Build. And so obviously rewrite those to be, you know, so real for you and personable for you. But, um, but those are a good base and a good starting place to start. I think to go off on the keeping it simple thing, I think when you talk about each product, remembering to only say two or three ways you can use it. That's helps. perfect. And then when you're relating it back to what they talked about in the beginning with their health goals, but I'm when you so add like that. six things on one oil, it's just kind of overwhelming and they don't remember half of that. And then the next day they don't remember half of that. So if you only do three, you're safer that they'll remember those three by tomorrow. Yes. I'm so glad you said that because that's so important. And I totally should have had that on my list. Um, um, but yeah, that's so good. And don't be afraid to like write down their health concerns because you want to make that's not going to show any sign of weakness, right? That's going to show them that you really care about it and you want to make sure you go over it. So if you're writing them down and then as you go over the 10 oils, like Kaylee said, you can then incorporate what it is that they're worried about. For instance, if they're really struggling with depression or whatever, say, hey, well, you know what? Drinking lemon, taking lemon internally is good for stabilizing mood and lifting mood or diffusing it really good for <coughs> lifting your mood. So 
Some of that is hard though, because if you don't know what a variety of things that each oil is good for, that would be a little bit harder to do. But you can always check the book for things, right? So let them know that, hey, I've got this app on my phone. Let's go look it up and see what oils are recommended for. And do that with them like after the class. Um, so yeah, how do you guys do that? So are, are you guys all confident enough that if somebody says like, here are my health concerns, you could find one of the 10 oils to recommend to them for whatever they've mentioned? Most of the time. I think that it leaves it open-ended too. And you know, a lot of times I'll say, and if none of those work for you, then we'll try to figure out another one that does because sometimes it'll work for this person, but won't work for this person. So um, I think especially having the Facebook groups, it allows you to make a longer list of ideas. Yeah. There's things you guys have posted and I haven't tried, but then I can give that to someone else who goes, I tried everything you said and it's not working or whatever. Right. Um, so I think just leaving it open-ended where we'll try these things and see how they go for you. And then if not, then we can look at a few other options. Okay. And that gives you time. But I think when you're also, that's something you can focus on to um, like the self taking time for yourself and self growth is learning something about each oil or something every day or week or whatever you want to do. But yeah, I think that's all of us are like four or five years in and we're still learning new stuff. I was like, I didn't know you could use that for that. Yeah. So, so true. Well, I learn something new almost every day too. I mean, yeah. it, it's, and I get it from somebody asking me about, you know, what do you use for such and such? And then I look it up and I'm like, Oh, well, there you go. That's what you use right. for that. Um, so would you recommend saying, new, sorry. And for people that are new, you know, don't let it intimidate you. If you right. don't know, just right. have your book there and don't be afraid to say, I don't know, because then you're, showing people how easy it is to find these things, you know, and that they can do it for themselves even. Right. right. That's that what idea. I was going to ask. Yeah. Would you have your book there and be like, Oh, well, let's look it up. Or would you say, Oh, let me get back to you. And I would have it with you so you can look okay. it up so that you're showing them how you're finding the answer. That's okay. what I would do. Yeah. I usually have that book with a, with a class and a catalog. That's really all I bring besides the <laughs> Or even the app on your phone. Like, I don't know if you guys have the Modern Essentials app. It's not, I mean, it's like six or seven dollars, but it's always updated. So you always- That's a, a really new. good idea. I didn't think of that. So then you don't have, have to carry a book with you. We had the um, Mennonite wives over last night and a lot of them don't use Facebook or anything. And she's like, well, how do we look at all this stuff? And I was like, oh, totally didn't think that through. And I didn't think through giving them the app because they can totally have that on their phone. Yeah. So oh, yeah. Call them tonight and tell them that. Yeah. Yeah. I like it because it's, well, anything portable, right? They can go with you. Right. But, and hopefully with, you know, say somebody rattles off like four health concerns, hopefully there's one of them that you know, you know, if somebody says sore key muscles or hard time sleeping, you're going to know deep blue or lavender, right, right? To recommend to them when you're talking through those 10 basic oils. But say then they talk about like, you know, who knows? Cholesterol, Three other random things. Blood that, pressure. Yeah, blood pressure and hemorrhoids or whatever. I don't know. That you're like, I have no <laughs> idea what oils are good for those. Then you can look it up. So the only thing is though, is when you're doing that, is to make sure that you're that you're tying in those ten basic oils. So for instance, Penny, if you're if you're looking at it in the book maybe say, oh, you know what, this and this is recommended, but hey, so is lemon and lavender, right. as well as Roman chamomile and wild orange or whatever. So, so that the, those 10 oils are <coughs> repeated. And most of the times, I mean, there's a reason that those 10 oils are in the basic kits, right? Because um, most of the time, one of those 10 oils is going to be in a protocol for something. It's very rare that you see a protocol with not one of those 10. It's like really specific stuff, I guess. Because then that just keeps it simple for them. They're like, oh, phew, I can just get the 10 oils and be okay. I don't have to buy like 150 oils. <laughs> that sound good? Yep. Yep. Okay. So what other questions do you guys have? It doesn't have to be about this. It can be about anything. Anything at all? No? 
Mm. Are you guys get anybody going with the New Year, New You promos at all? I will be on the 4th. Oh, good. Yeah, I've got a class on the 4th of February that I'll sign up. I haven't signed up for it yet, but I will have it on there. Well, wait a minute. We can do those into February? I thought it was just January. You said that last year, too. Yeah, through oh, the end of February. Egg. End of February. Yep. I have a one-on-one -on, -one on Saturday, and then I have a friend. She's like, I think I'm going to sign up, but I need to talk to my husband. I'm like, okay. Awesome. So, well, that's so funny. So do you know what that means when she says that? She's got to talk yeah, to her husband? I don't know what that means. What does that mean? She's so worried about the price. Yes. Oh, I know it's the money for her. For yes. sure. Yep. So what you could do, you wanted, if you wanted to, is offer her like an intro kit. The, the, um, the little five mLs of lavender, lemon, and peppermint without a membership. Uh -huh. And just hover that for like, what, do, what is, what are those sell for? Like 25 retail? Yeah. I think so. 20. I think they're 20 R cost. So like, yeah, 25. Mm -hmm. that's a four. Then she could, then she's using the oils, right? So then she. Well, she's been using them. She, like, oh, she has? From me. Yeah. She buys stuff from me. Oh, that's so, so she's so like, funny. oh, maybe I should sign up. But I need that's to talk to my husband. <laughs> That's so funny. So yeah, she's definitely worried about the money thing. Oh, that's so funny. So she just needs to find um, a reason to justify it for her, right? To, be, to, right? to build value in it. So maybe you could help her by showing her like, hey, like, um, so like how much? Drop maybe? Well, or I was thinking that that isn't a good idea though too, Kaylee, because then you could do price per drop and then say, okay, so how much is it for dose of Tylenol or a dose for to bring down a fever and how much is it for a couple drops of peppermint. Um, right. Another option is you could say, so, you know, how much does it cost you when a family member is sick? Mm -hmm. I know that. Something else I've been doing recently is saying, how much does it cost for you to go out <laughs> for dinner one time with your family for fast food? That's mm -hmm. a one-time experience that takes a few minutes. And it's gone and it's the same cost for a bottle of oil that's going to last you a long time. 250 right. uses. Yeah. Yeah. So I like trying to have them kind of figure it out. So that's why I kind of like the question about um, how much does it cost you to have a family member be sick? So, mm -hmm. and it's different if she's working, right? So I'm assuming she doesn't work. We're in Utah she works part-time actually for my husband. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. That's too funny. Okay. So if she does, she, does she pick her own hours? Mm -hmm. Yeah. She works from home. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. So yeah. So it's easier to explain to people like if they have to go to work every day, like how much does it cost them if they're sick, right? Because then they have to miss work. Then do they get paid? Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, but then they have to go to the doctor and possibly catch something else and how much is their copay and how much time does that take out of their day? And then how much is their right. prescription and all that stuff? Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, okay. you need to go upstairs. Two basic questions I have. You have to order something every month, right? To not lose your points, even if it's like a thing of chapstick. Right. To keep but your points and percentage. Thing, right. But then the other thing is how, isn't there a minimum you have to spend every month to move up to the next to keep your rank percentage, you know, like you get 10% back, uh -huh. 15, yep. 20, it's 50. 50 every month for three months. And then you move up, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Yep. So, um, and then to get paid, it's a hundred. Right. Yep. So yeah, <laughs> you got it. Okay. Lorraine says, I know it's a future class, but where does LRP come in at this point? If people are struggling with kit price, where does LRP fit in? Okay. So we actually don't talk about LRP at all on that first basic class um, only because people are usually already have too much information with trying to decide on a kit and figure out how they put these 10 oils into their life. <laughs> but then if you throw in anything about LRP, people tend to panic because then they're like, oh my gosh, and I'm, I'm not just enrolling and getting a kit, but then I have to buy something every month and uh so LRP, you just talk about on the follow-up. And so that is a, and that is a topic that we're going to discuss, I think, in February that we have tips for a great follow-up. And it will be in there. So is it this month? When are we doing up? that one? I got to look at my schedule. So when you sign them up, do you usually put them on LRP or no? I don't. Um, 
Yep. If unless there's something that they want to get right away or there's some promotion that they're really interested in. But typically I don't. We leave that I leave that up to them for the next month and when they're ready to, to buy something. So um let me see, where is Oh, actually, we're talking about it next week and the week after. So, yeah, so next week we're talking about getting more team members on LRP, and then the week after that is tips for a great follow-up appointment. And I've got um, Marilyn Booman is going to be on with us. She's going to help because she has – I love the way she phrases things when she teaches her follow-up appointment. She removes, she removes that pressure. She makes them feel so safe and, like, there's no worry about the commitment about being in on LRP. So she's going to kind of go over that with us and how she, um, how she talks to her team members about LRP because I've sat in on a few, um, like one-on-ones with her when she does it. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, sign me up. Like she just is so good. <laughs> she's so good. So, um, anyway, and she's got more, She's got more team members ordering a hundred than like, or at least on LRP than like anybody. She's, she's got a very high percentage. Okay. So how and when do you promote the new year or new you? I, I don't actually until the follow up, but that doesn't mean you couldn't, you could definitely throw in a little tidbit there about that. Cause then again, it's getting into the LRP stuff, but Kaylee and Stacey, have you guys incorporated that at all with? I haven't this year since we've simplified things and changed yeah. things. But how, I mean, wouldn't you need to promote it in the beginning? Because they have to do new, with a new year, new you, you have to do it with your enrollment. You have to do your LRP with the enrollment? Well, well, you have your enrollment, and then you have, don't they have to sign up for, no, it's just the next month, don't, yeah. right? So you could still okay. do it as a follow-up well, yes, appointment. I haven't which, thought about it much. Which then you would be even more likely, I would think, to get on. Because, right, because now they're sold on the oils. They got a kit. They're good there. But then, then you could definitely, that would, that would be an awesome promo to, as far as to helping them incentivize to get on LRP. Because they've already spent the 100 right, on the kit. So they didn't right. even really think about that. But, um, but, yeah, then the next month. Oh, but it's month. Okay, let's see what Lorraine say. But the month is the month before, so it has to be the current month when they enroll. Yes, but so they can then do, so to qualify for the new year, new you, they just have to enroll with 100 and then purchase 100 with their first month on LRP, right? I got this right, everybody? Okay, so if you do your follow-up appointment with them, like a one-on-one -on -one after, like say two weeks after the class, you're still going to be in that time frame for them to, to do a, an LRP if they want to and get their 100 PV of oils. And I think... As long as you enter in that promo code, is it, is, it, is it before their LRP goes through or is it just by the end of that month? I'll have to look at the rules again. I haven't. I've been kind of laid back the last couple of weeks. I know. I haven't been. I haven't looked at it. I don't know if they thought it was with the enrollment. I know it's not with the enrollment. I know they have a while to do it. It might be with the LRP, but it might not be. It might even be until the end of the following month. We'll have to go look up the... Yeah, the I know it's not with the enrollment, though. It, it, if anything, it's by the time their LRP process is. And I can't, of course, pull For up. the next month, right? What's that, Kaylee? For the next month, right? Yeah. So they, yeah. Or, they order or enroll with a kit, and then they have to, before that LRP process is, let's say, in February, then they have to have that code put in there. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was thinking because I think they ship the free product with the LRP typically, don't they? You can tell I, like, don't do this promo. I think so because they have to just process it. So if that order processes and goes through and it's all paid for and stuff, then... Got it. Okay, so Lorraine said, um, but for it to be in next month, it has to be the prior month, doesn't it? Oh, no. Not if they're new because they can't actually set up LRP until they've already been in a month. So if somebody enrolls, say, January 1st, the system will not let them 
process an LRP until February 1st. So they can set one up, but they, it's, it's can't process at all. Really? So, when did that change? Yeah, I didn't know that. It's always been that way. No, because I had, I had some people last year enroll with the new year, new year. They enrolled like at the end of January, like the last couple of days of January, they have their enrollment order. And then the first week of February, they process. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So yes, as soon as the next month is there, they can do it. Sorry. So January, I was trying to say, so January 1st, somebody enrolls. They can't do their next thing until February 1st. So I was saying enrolled the entire month. That wasn't a good example because I used the first. Okay, so if they're enrolled the entire month of January, they cannot do an LRP until February. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so whatever month Not that you enroll. Not the first the first. I know. Oh, my gosh, no. Okay. That was a bad example. Okay, <laughs> so yeah. So if they're, whatever month they enroll in, they cannot do LRP until the following month. So yeah, so Lorraine, so Lorraine says, but um, to process it in February, you have to do it in January. So no, you can set it up anytime in, in February for it to process in February. Um, no, they don't have to set it up in January. They can set it up in February. But so say their date is wrong or the date that they want isn't available, then they can just push it through earlier or... Um, you can push it till like the last day. You can even change it up to the day yeah. you have to do it. Yeah. So yep. It says the 17th, you could go in there and change it the morning of the 16th and change it to like the 23rd if you wanted to. Yeah. Yep. If there's ever a date not available, I've heard if you just call, mm -hmm. they'll change it for you to whatever the date is you want. So, yeah. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, you don't have to set it up way in January, so Lorraine, because you could set it up in like if they wanted a, an LRP to process January 15th, they could set it up, or sorry, February 15th, they could set it up for February 14th. They could hop on the rack office and set it up and it would process through the next day. So it doesn't have to be done or it doesn't have to be set up the month before. So that's a good question. And it is super confusing with um, the new year, new, new year. Yeah, yeah, new year, new year stuff. It's so confusing. There's so many loopholes and they change, or not loopholes, but rules. And they change it. It seems like almost every year I get so confused. So anyway, Lila's not earning her Skittles, guys. I'm so sorry. I'll take them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So any other questions? Stacy, did you do that uh, um, recruitment? thing with Tasha this weekend? I did not. We did hair day on Saturday. You, <laughs> you should see her hair. That when it's already done. Do you know? Say that again? Can you go back through and buy that class after it's already done? I'll bet you can. I I did her I think her last recruitment when I did that way. I did it a couple so days good. later. And uh, so I'll bet she would let you because she just re she records them. Yeah. And then puts them back on her, that website that she's I, got. I guess the morning of this weekend, she completely threw out the workbook that we had all printed out and rewrote it that morning. So we wow. all knew, yeah. So the, she's like, if you printed the workbook, I'm so sorry, but it has, does not go along with anything I'm saying today. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I think usually, yeah, Kaylee, you can buy the recording. Exactly. For less than the actual, than attending the live class. Can you? I wonder, well, because I bought it before, and then I was, I think that, and forgot what time zones I was in. <laughs> so I, like, kept going in on it, and I'm like, oh, crap, she's in another session. So I got out quick, like, three times, and I was like, wait a second. And I went in, and I had missed, like, an hour and a half of it. Oh, bummer. So I just rewatched it, but I didn't know if you could buy it if you weren't there for the live or anything. Or yeah. Or it beforehand or whatever. So. Yep. I, I'm, like, 99% sure that you can go in and buy it once it's after it's so done. So recommend doing that. Even if you're not building it as a business, that one was huge for me. Yep. So, so. so and Kaylee's talking about the recruiting um, workshop, and I think I posted a link to that on – the Breeze Share Build page, and we have a 20% discount that um, with her. So any of her trainings that you want to take, you get 20% off if you enter in the code. I think it's Miller2. Yep. Um, 
So yeah, so like she, twenty two dollars. Twenty two. So yeah, twenty two bucks for a training, and it's just she's so it's so worth it. So worth she it. She does a great job. She, and she will stick in your head. She makes things so basic and simple. And as you're doing things, you're gonna hear her voice in your head. Like Kaylee posted about. <laughs> Hashtag mean coach. Yeah. Oh, I gotta go. Bye guys. Hey, good, good luck. luck. Bye. Good luck. Wrong way. Um, okay. Well, if you guys have any other questions, throw them out. And if not, next week, I'm glad that this day and time works better for so many people. And then, oh, Diana, we, um, right before you hopped on, I was just saying, I think I'm going to do a daytime on Thursdays at 10. I'm going to post that on Breach Your Build, but um, maybe that one will work better for you. I think you were one of the daytime, daytime peeps. So um, anyway. Okay, well, we'll see you guys next.